started as soon as we have everybody registered and in. We're a little bit lagging. Well, it is, it is country, right? I didn't know that. All right. Go back to
Kathleen Zabicki is our artist. Big round of applause. McLaren. And my name is Margaret Fight. It's so nice to have you. Part of my problem is going to be, you know, not getting all cheery eyed because it's just amazing how this has turned out. Um, when we started out, we had no idea where we were going, <laughs> and we got here, and it's just, it's just amazing. So. Um, I would like to thank all of you for being here. I wanted to let you know that I'm going to read out some street names, and if you just happen to be on that street, or, or you live on that street, just raise your hand. We're not going to call out your name and embarrass you, okay? So how about Sunnyside? There you go. Noblestown? Woo! Big contingency back there. How about Elwyn? Oh, wow. Oh, boy. The Sutton girls are in the house. Yes, ma'am. The Sutton girls are in the house because their mother not only built one house, then she built two houses, and then she built three houses. So we got lots of Suttons, right? Okay, how about Arlington? Here you go. Columbia. I know we have Columbia. Absolutely, we have Columbia. Uh, Cannon. Tom Cannon here? Okay, maybe he'll be here later. Suburban. Suburban. <laughs> Linden. <laughs> Elm. I know we have one on Elm. She better have her hand in the air. There she is. Walker. There. Absolutely. Old Noblestown. Where are you, Karen? Put your hand up, Old Noblestown. Yeah, a lot of people don't know about that. It's a secret, right? We like it that way, okay? McMichael, our new friends on McMichael, yes. Number one, McMichael. Home Avenue. Let's see it for Home Avenue. There they are. Okay. Did I miss anybody? Did I miss a street? I don't think I did, did I? They will be more than happy to tell you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and please do not do not hesitate to speak out because, you know, it's, it's right or there. <laughs> okay. Um, at this time, I would like to introduce our pastor, Reverend Jody Flack, and I would like to say a few words about our pastor, Jody Flack. <laughs> It is my pleasure and my honor, see I knew it was going to happen, um, to introduce our pastor, Reverend Jody Flack. As a side note, Pastor Jody is the longest tenured pastor in the history of this church, founded in 1903. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, it's an honor uh, for me to be here today to commemorate this history of Renardale, to remember the vision of the early inhabitants and to have them immortalized in watercolors. So uh, when I came to Renardale in 2003, Renardale was described to me as a railroad community where the inhabitants would take the train on the panhandle into Pittsburgh every day and then they would come back uh, and walk up the street from the Rennerdale uh, station down on the panhandle. And that's what it has been. It has been a railroad community, but it has also been a wonderful community. It is home. And that's what I found that it is uh, when I became the pastor here in 2003. A place where pe people grow together. A place where people grow old together. A place where people always wave to you even if they don't know you. It's a place where kids leave home in the morning and come back when the street lights come back home. 
It's a place of a magical pond where you can fish in the summer and ice skate in the winter and then run up to the corner store and have a hoagie or a piece of pizza. And it's a place where we pray together and we pray for each other. And that's where this church comes in. Do you know that we pray for all of you every Sunday in this community? Um, we are so grateful that three of the authors and the artists, uh, Kathleen and Margie and Doug, are members of our church. Uh, this church has been a pillar of the community since 1903, a, a literal cornerstone on Noblestown and, and uh, Columbia. They used to call it Noblestown State Street. Uh, we even have an anthem that we sing every October about the little church um, on State Street. So we are so grateful that we are part of this community. I feel that we've been kind of a beacon of light for many years. And when we ring the bell every Sunday morning, I want you to know that we are praying for this community. And so on this wonderful day where we celebrate the vision and hard work of our authors, we remember the vision and courage and hard work of all those who have gone before us. So friends, let us pray that we have the courage and the vision to continue this community uh, to be on the foundation that has been laid for each of us. Thank you. So at this time, I would like to um, have Doug hold up the book, and I'd like to show you the, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Show you the front of the book, and I'd like to introduce Caleb. Caleb, would you come up, please? <laughs> Caleb is fourth generation, and he had made a decision for his Eagle Scout that he would um, redo the, the Welcome to Renardale signs. And so for those of you who grew up in Renardale, what you will remember is there were three of them. Um, what, one in Noblestown or two in Noblestown? Two in Noblestown and one in McMichael. One on McMichael, right. Um, Caleb's great-grandfather is H.H. H. Swoger. And he actually, um, I guess, came up with the idea that people needed to know who we were. And he had done those signs, how many years ago do you think? More like so. <laughs> probably, in the, it was in the, probably 30s, 40s. 30s, 40s. Yeah, yeah. Time gets away from you. <laughs> so Caleb, um, Caleb went to Collier Township and said, I would like permission to, to do the signs and, um, you know, put them alongside the road. And as it just so happened, you know, over the years, those signs went MIA. You know, whether a semi knocked it down or somebody stole it, well, we don't know. But all of a sudden, as he seated in this meeting, um, a fellow says to him, Oh, yeah, we have a sign in the back closet that was the original sign. <laughs> <laughs> so, Caleb, then what happened? So, if you get a chance, okay, it's all documented here in Caleb's album. You can hold that up, Caleb, and to show them. Um, and his Eagle Scout plaque is here to see as well if you want to take pictures. Um, when, when Caleb brought the sign and started to work on it, um, one of the things that happened was that he had envisioned that it would go alongside the road. Unfortunately, um, 
whatever, whether it's county, whether it's, you know, whatever, state road, he was not permitted, correct? Okay. So um, I think that it's very, very fitting that um, he was able to put it right here at 143 Noblestone, right? How about that, Deb? I got it right. Yeah. One, <laughs> who knew? I mean, it's only been the Swover house for 150 years, you know. So, so now the sign is, is at one, 143 Noblestown, you know, you can see it. And um, when we got wind, right, of Caleb and his project, what did you say? Well, you said we've got to get a picture of that. Well, yes. Okay. Yeah, you stick to because sometimes I forget where I'm <laughs> You know, I have to tell you that we really are Thelma and Louise. <laughs> no, no, seriously, we are, because here's what would happen. I would say, you missed the house. She'd say, what do you mean I missed the house? And I would say, 8 Elm Avenue. She's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and so then we would get in the car, right? And we would drive around Brennerdale, and she has her iPad hanging out the window, <laughs> taking pictures of people's houses, you know? And, and then she would go home and in the afternoon paint three. Who, who, who does that? <laughs> but anyhow, when she got wind of Caleb, when she got wind of the Eagle Scout project, um, when she saw it, she said, that's the cover. So Caleb, I don't know how to thank you. Well, also, oh. now I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I would uh, take the houses and things that I had done, I'd take them to this group of famous artists, women in the city, and one woman had been the art critic for the Pittsburgh Press Gazette at the time, and she said, that has to be the cover. That's how I yeah. um, and, uh, so, It was. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Caleb did this project in honor of H.H. Swoger. He did it to honor his great-grandfather, and it now sits center stage on the front cover, as well as at 143 Noblestown Road, in the front yard, back to where it was originally forged, forged full, full circle, full circle. Caleb, we cannot thank you enough. We're gonna get, uh, get some business taken care of here, if you don't mind. Andy, would you and Evan come up front, do you mind? In the beginning, when this project started, one of the things that we talked about was keeping a handle on the advertising costs, because that can get a little bit out of hand. And not only that, we talked so much about mailings, you know, things get mailed to your house, you, you really don't remember, you put it in a stack, you know, you walk away, and you never get back to it. So. One of the things that, it was my idea, just, just so you know, okay, I am the fish, fish fry lady. Um, so because of COVID, uh, the Renovale Volunteer Fire Department had to go to strict takeout with the fish fries. So they had a fish fry in 2021, they had a fish fry in 2022. And, and we talked so much about how are we gonna advertise this, and I thought, oh my gosh, we could just put a flyer right in that fish fry bag, right? So I talked to Andy, who lives on Elwyn, and um, right across from my grandmother's house, by the way. Uh, we still refer to houses like the Schlieper Hill and my grandmother's house and things like that. So, um, in fact, you live right next door to the four Sutton, the, the Sutton girls, just so you know. <laughs> that was their lot. Okay. Your house is on their lot. Okay. <laughs> I always remember that. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, yes, we had flyers done, and um, they stuffed them in the bags, and that was one year. And then the next year, they stuffed them in the bags. And you guys did really well. That first year knocked you out of the box, though, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the first year, <laughs> they were lined out to where to go to school. Right? That's why I that's why I got in line at three thirty. Yeah. 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 Because I no, I already knew. 
Yeah. You know, I figured this is this is going to be big, and it was big. So we we decided as a team that we would take ten dollars of your money from the books, and we would donate it to the Runnerdale Fire Hall in honor of what they do to keep us safe. And we can't thank you enough. So we would like you to accept this check for six hundred dollars. Okay. Evan, you the chief? Yeah. Okay, so Chief Evan, what's it like down there in COVID? I mean, are you getting a little bit, uh, are you getting, you know, back to normal or things are still? Yeah, it's getting back to normal now. I mean, it was slow there for a while with all the COVID stuff going on, but it's getting back there. Yeah. So, so when we were growing up, it truly was, you know, totally volunteer. And I was going to ask Doug if he would, um, do you think that you could show a couple pictures there of 30 Columbia? Um, in the book, what you'll see um, are pictures of a uh, fire truck, I think it's 1937. I was hoping that um, the daughter of the gentleman driving the fire truck, which was Elaine Bud Craig, yeah. So Bernie Craig was supposed to be here, but she was not able to be. So when you read the book, what you're going to see, I don't know where the fire truck is, but it should be at 30 Columbia, hopefully. I'm sorry, not Columbia, Suburban. I knew I was going to do that. The other, the other picture in the book, too, um, how many of you know Beetle Krieger? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so Beetle Krieger is three years old on the fire truck with his dad, Jake. Yeah, and I had really hoped that Susie and Beetle could be here. Susie took a tumble. So I suspect that that's, you know, that's why they're not here today. But um, the other picture too of Beetle is done at the end of Columbia. He and Jake, and I think it's an iconic picture. It was taken from the back and Jake is kneeling and Beetle's three years old and they're looking over the hillside at a steam train, at a steam train. So, so there's pictures in the book uh, that go way, way back, uh, pictures of the pond that you, you just can't believe it, you know? So um, I don't think there's words for us to thank you enough for everything that you do. We so much appreciate it. Thank you. Miss Kathleen. Yes. You ready? You ready to run one? Do. All right. You're up. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, can you hear me? Because I have. Can you some, hear me now? Well, I'm making your view. I ain't watching. We just didn't hear it. We just didn't go over Blossom Cliff in that car, did we? We did not. <laughs> there were times though where we probably would have liked to push one another over. Yeah, and she had a Jeep and she was driving like a wild woman. Uh, <laughs> it's Rannerdale. <laughs> besides, it's a Hemi. <laughs> anyway. I shouldn't start out with this, but it's important to me. My husband passed, you know, um, in 19, and then COVID hit all of us. Hit me and hit all of us in the country and world. So uh, I've never been known to clean house or cook. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what do I do? Well, I did do costumes, which was fun. I did costumes for three months. Just whatever in the house I put on and put put it on Facebook, I live on Facebook, and uh, people seem to like those, and then I thought, well, that's that's enough of that. And so I looked out the window and started cleaning neighbors' houses, and and I do post things, but you need a response. You know, you, you know the cat was no good. The, the, you know, <laughs> sometimes it did crawl on the paintings, but the cat didn't talk much. But uh, I would paint houses and got responses from artists, friends, near and wide. You know, this is great, but I'm not known for doing houses, so this is just the beginning. And painting all these houses, whatever time of day I'd have on the farm, I would just, sometimes I sat out and painted from the car, sometimes I'd sketch, 
various ways. And so I kept you know, painting these and posting them and getting responses from artists and people. And uh, they would say, great one, or this needs work, or various, uh, various responses. Uh, one of the greatest ones was this guy from uh, Philadelphia. He said, I'm moving to Renerville. <laughs> yes. Yeah, hit the line. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, you know, out. also, also that I didn't, I just would put a house there. <laughs> then somebody said, well, you need a street, you need a street. So then I began putting a street name, you know, nothing, no, no number, no person, just, I never did uh, trans, you know, I never did anything illegal much. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Uh, then I would put a street name on it, and sometimes it would be wrong. And I had people that grew up there said, "No, Mrs. and Vicky, that's on Elwood instead of Sunny Street." You know, I said, "Okay, I'll change it." Because living here seventy years, I really didn't know the names of the streets. You just go down, up and down, whatever street you go. Now I know every nook and cranny, every uh, street, every dead end. Uh, but uh, you know, responses from my artist friends was really great, and. Uh, but then began local, you know, people that grew up here moved away, and uh, they would, you know, would comment and say, uh, "Mrs. Ibiki been in your house." So I made a lot of new friends on Facebook <laughs> by this, and uh, it was, you know, again, eating feedback is really crucial, and uh, and these are not, they're not real estate houses. They're not for real estate. They're my vision of, sometimes they're called, you know, a sketch. Some people even call them the house portrait, but they're, you know, what, whatever they are, they're uh, my, my vision of these. Uh, and I, I had such fun, you know, driving around, painting them the car. One time I'm driving, cruising, and this lady was walking a dog, and I said, have I painted your house yet? And she said, Oh, you're the one. Ah! <laughs> that, ah, that was me. But again, the responses from the, the people that grew up here. So remember this come, Halloween's coming. I mean, the, the, the people would say, oh, we played in that attic. There was the nicest man lived in that house. And uh, food entered a lot. This woman made the best sloppy joes. I mean, food was important. And Halloween candy in this house, Halloween candy in this house. Uh, we ate all the apples in that. In fact, all the comments were positive. Uh, you know, there was a nice man living there. You know, so memories, childhood memories, it was amazing. You know, I mean, I learned so much from the people, the kids, the people that grew up, and where some were here and some were not. And uh, let's see, oh yeah, they said we played in the attic, and uh, this was all. Um, what you need for houses, I feel the need for, again, they're not real estate houses, these are kind of arty, and, uh, but you need a lead-in. So a, a sidewalk is good, a driveway, a, uh, people walking in the snow to get up to the house. Uh, thank God we have mail, these mailboxes, there's a good lead-in. Trash bins are nice. Uh, <laughs> yes. Well, you know, man, you know how you need a lead in if you need these things. And so most people wouldn't, they wouldn't want a trash thing on it. But I mean, that's important. You, you, know, you have to have a trash bin. And there were uh, oh, several fire plugs. Loved them. One of my favorite is tar in the road leading up to the house. The tar in the road. Artists know this, but the best one was I drove down the dead end road. It was a night time, not nearly, and there was a tractor in front of the house. I said, a tractor. And so I took a couple pictures and I went back the next day because the house was going to sit there and paint this. It was gone, you know. So I had to you know, just use what I, whatever I had. And um, let's see, well, this was all just, I was just doing this for me, you know, keeping me out of the bars and off the street. No, it was really saving my life, you know, because. There's, you know, I Instacart food came in. I never went anywhere. The doctor, dentist, that's it for two and a half years. That was it. And um, anyway, and then and there's and there's all this. Well, it only started when we sent Doug his house. Well, 
Oh, well, I, I did Doug's house, yes, my old neighbor from the past, but uh, he saw these things on Facebook. People can, you know, see the world on Facebook, and so there was a discussion about this happening, the book happening, and uh, do I want in it? Because they had worked together on prior Call Your Township books. I said, why not? So this really became a project, you know, it was something serious to continue it. And, uh, and, it's, and Rand, who isn't here, our editor, that I don't know how somebody could edit from Washington, but he kept us in line. And yes. Somewhat, it was hard with margin. And, uh, <laughs> and he was amazing, a smart guy. Oh, he, he, he would say, well, only two houses. One house, he said, yeah, he was very kind. He was, this one house, he said, it seems it's all black. He said, what it was, it was the nighttime, and just windows showed for, you know. So he, he said, could you please do another one? And I said, well, you're the editor, so I did another one. And the other only criticism from him was, it was all, a lot of trees in Rennerdale, and there were all these golden yellow trees, and the only thing you could see of the house was two garage doors. And that's, for artists, that's okay, but for most people, they want to see a part of a house. So I did that again, and you know, he was very kind, and, and uh, oh, with that, and not other, no other criticisms, and, uh, and uh, let's see. Oh, here's the important one. I almost forgot this. People, you know, buy other people's houses. They may have no connection. They may have never been in it. They may have, you know, not never gone in it, never been near it. And who knows why? And I'm not saying these are all museum pieces necessarily, but uh, but but it happened. In fact, the photographer who's here today, he wanted to know where his house was, and I sold it a year ago. You know, because I put these things online, and the people, you know, I said, sure, you know. And so this one very proper man from Pittsburgh, he, he, he says, Kathleen, can you sell these? And I said, well, sure. He said, well, I'll come out in a hazmat suit and, uh, you know, and buy it. And I said, okay, so I researched this particular house because uh, I wanted to find out how old it was, anything, illegal stuff, anything that would happen, had happened or anything, information I could get. And I did get all this information when we came out. I told him all this and I said, why is it uh, that you wanted this? He said, I liked it. <laughs> simple as that. It's as simple as that. And, but, and that's amazing to me that people, and another woman that, that wanted to buy you know, she wanted to buy her house and it was already sold. She said, why would somebody want my house? Said, Don't ask me. Oh, here's the, the, the other one. This guy came to the house that I've known since he was young. He said, Kathleen, I would like the house. Uh, or buy that. I said, you can't. I promised it to somebody else. He said, I need it. It's my wife's anniversary next week. He says, you have to sell it to me. And I said, you know, I can't, but I, uh, anyway, I called the other woman and, and I did give it to him and uh, painted that twice. And it was a difficult house, but it was, uh, I don't solve that. Anyway, this has been a great trip. And, uh, and then when Doug, you know, mentioned and became a project and we worked together as, uh, as best we can from Kentucky and Leonardville here in, in Washington. And it's, it's been a great trip and it's, so, and Doug is such a good writer. I mean, if you have, you have the book, his stories are fantastic. And this little person, not only is she a kooky person, she's a good cook. She's been feeding me for two years. She's been, <laughs> she's been feeding me, you know, which, uh, which is really helpful. And uh, Rand from Washington, it's a shame he isn't here, but it was, it's been a great ride, and thank you all. When you go, ooh, baby, when you go to lulu.com and you search by the last name of the author, G-E-E, -E, you will see the previous books of Collier Township there as well. So um, they're very interesting. Um, that's kind of how Douglas and I got um, 
got started on this project was because uh, because Rand was doing Call Your History and um, he had actually uh, almost gone to print with one of them when he realized he didn't have Call Your Churches. So he had left Pastor Jody a message. So at this time, I would like to introduce my cohort in crime here. In the book, what you will see is a picture taken at 37 Elwyn Avenue. I, I have to do it, you know that. And are, are we nine months old or have we reached a, a year? We're just standing. Okay, so if we stood at nine months or we stood at a year. But, but he was born in January, is that right? And I was born in April. And well, you have shorts on, or is that me? <laughs> okay, so here's the best part. <laughs> when we sent the photograph to Rand, and he sent it back to be proofed, he had me in the babushka. <laughs> so, Douglas and I have been together for a long time. I'd like to introduce Douglas McLaren to you. You, you'll read in the book, uh, this babushka, uh, it was a word that my mother used, being from German uh, descent, and uh, this babushka she had on my head all the time, simply because she was afraid of earaches. Uh, on me, not her, <laughs> on me. And so I have written in the book, I said, you know, I don't know when I stopped re uh, wearing this babushka that my mother would put on me, but I know that my first grade picture, it is not on me. <laughs> so, uh, before I really, truly get started here, I, I want you to recognize the fact this is the first time I've been on this stage in 60 years. And I can remember 60 years ago during a Christmas pageant, I was sitting right here in one of those chairs, they've taken the chairs off of the, the stage here, but it was one of those ornate chairs. And I was sitting here dressed in a crown with, it was probably painted gold and had emeralds on it, and probably someone's pleated curtain. I was King Harry. And, and, and I, I had over, this, it's unbelievable coming back here after all these years, how small things became. I don't know why they reduced the size of this stage. <laughs> it's been reduced, I know, it had to have been. My memory's not that bad. But over here I was speaking to the centurions, you know, saying, you know, it's time to go out and find this uh, baby Jesus that everyone's talking about. But uh, it was 60 years ago that I was sitting right here. I will tell you this, it was at that particular point in my life that my family and everyone in Rennedale recognized that acting was not in my future. <laughs> it was not, not to be, not to be. So that was, that was 60 years ago. Uh, again, my name is Doug McLaren. I was born uh, Google says, Google Maps says that I was born 417 feet from this back door, diagonally out of here. Uh, if you go the other way, uh, it's double that uh, distance. If you get down Columbia, turn left on Suburban, go to the second driveway on the left and turn up at 14 Suburban, that's where I spent my first 22 years of life. Um, I was raised right, right there. Um, but uh, it, it's been a, a wild ride. Uh, I, I enjoyed every one of those years. Um, it it uh, is unbelievable uh, what all took place uh, in my life, and I'm, I'm thankful for it being started uh, right here. Um, getting back to the book, I, I want you to recognize the fact that this Rand G, or Rand G that we talk about he lives in the state of Washington. He was raised on Thomas Run. He, Tom's Run. He was never in the city of Renderdale. He said, I may have passed by on Noblestown Road, but I never literally stopped here. He knew nothing about anyone in this town. He didn't know anything about any of the streets, anything. He was our go-to person on this whole project, uh, simply because he had the computer. He was the IT person. And uh, like Marty said, um, he had written other books. And Marty and I were uh, just coming off of this one. Uh, 
not as authors, myself not as an author, I contributed a, th a few things to it. And I'll, I'll get back to how this all got started in just a second. But um, I think that you, you have all heard the uh, expression, it takes a village uh, to accomplish anything. Well, folks, it's you that helped make this book possible. I mean, we have pictures in there, we have stories in there, but it's the stories that fill in between and make the cement, the foundation of all of the, the book that we have here. And I know that we have a book you don't. Uh, we've read it for two years. You haven't read one page of it yet. You will get there in a few few moments. Um, but it, it does take a village, and we appreciate very much what all you contributed. Uh, some of you contributed uh, simply a story. We had the pictures of the house. You contributed a story. Some people, uh, the walkers especially, we appreciate that. The swokers especially. Uh, there's a, a great deal of information that was brought forth because of that of pictures or just the stories that uh, melded the whole community together. So you are part of this book, meaning that you are part of the writing uh, uh, mission of this thing. Um, but uh, the way it all began in, uh, well, let's, let's see, here's one other thing. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, it, it all began uh, with a simple email, and I went back just before I left. I live in Kentucky now, and so just like uh, uh, Kathleen said, it's a three-state project. Uh, the state of Pennsylvania here in Rennerdale, the two of them, uh, Ron uh, G., uh, Randy G., is, <laughs> is out in the state of Washington, and he may be watching this right now, I'm not sure. Um, and then myself, I was in the state of Kentucky. And so we got this thing together, and this is how I think this is my story that I can tell that I think this all, how it all got together. And what it was is uh, uh, Kathleen, I, I have not talked to Kathleen in 50 some years. Uh, she was my next door neighbor, right, right behind the hedges. Uh, she was my next door neighbor and I haven't talked to her in 50 some years. And all of a sudden uh, on my email, I got this email that had Kathleen and Vicki written at the top. Thank you very much for having that because you know, you're very often cautious about who you uh, get things from. And the other thing that was uh, written on, on that uh, particular subject line, it said, your old house. And so I put two and two together and came up with, I'll take a chance. And because there was an attachment. And so I hit that attachment and lo and behold, what comes up is a picture, her interpretation of my home. Uh, which is in there. These are all done by streets. So when you open the book up, look for your street, you'll find your home very quickly. But there was that picture of my home. So I sent a note to Kathleen saying, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much for this. Uh, tell me a little bit more about it. Well, she said, I am here alone with a cat trying to keep sane by painting Rennerdale houses. And that's it. <laughs> that's all she said. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it brought me up to date as to what was going on. So I, uh, so um, I wrote back, and we made a little more connection. This, that, and that. And she explained to me that all of these homes were painted. Now, I told this story to somebody. I, I can't remember who, what, where, and they thought that the way I was telling it, painting houses. They thought that Kathleen was going literally around. <laughs> the city of Rennerdale painting houses. And I said, oh, no, 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 these are watercolors. And so uh, Kathleen uh, explained to me that she was uh, painting these uh, homes, uh, watercolors, and uh, that she had, oh, up to close to 200 of them, which meant every one of the homes uh, was uh, painted a watercolor. And so, um, I then, uh, I, you know, we communicated a little bit more. So, uh, Margie, like I said, uh, she and I had just come off of this book, and that was we were, we were putting stories in there about uh, Rennerdale. And I wrote a, a note to Margaret, oh boy, same day that Kathleen wrote me the note. Yeah, same day. And it said, I just got another note from Kathleen. I think that's the one she was telling me about the cat and the painting. I just got another, another note from Kathleen, and she said she is doing a project by painting houses in Rennerdale. Margie, you need to talk to her. Sounds like an opportunity. Sounds like an art show. 
All I was suggesting was is with all these paintings, she could have an art show literally in the lower level, just like it is going on right now, just a, an art show. And I said, what do you think? Well, at the time, we're dealing with Ray and uh, G at the time, there were two words that Margaret forwarded my message to Rand, and she simply said, any suggestions? And this was the end result, was this book right here. Uh, we, we communicated by Zoom, is wonderful, uh, but we communicated by Zoom, and what it came down to was um, each, each home in uh, Rennerdale, and I'll explain the scope of that in just a second. I know that there's some people that, you know, would like a little bit more. But, um, so what we said was each page would have two basic things, and that was the watercolor by Kathleen and a recent photograph of that home. And then also what we did is we, we gleaned the information from Allegheny County that gave the official designation of what that house is, you know, the street address and a pin number and things like that. So that was essential. And then Iran said, you know, to make this thing more personable, you all needed to be involved in it. We suggested, he suggested that we come and ask you to write everything and anything you wanted about that home. Whether you live there now and would like to tell us why you came to Rennerdale, why it was an attraction, or if you were historically uh, attached to that house, which I, I don't know, just because maybe I'm an author, he gave me a lot of leeway, but I've got a lot of pages in there for 14 Suburban Avenue. But, but the thing was, is he, he, he said, you know, we need to make this thing alive and personable to the people that are going to acquire the book. And so that's why I say it takes a village, and you all did that very, very well. So we certainly appreciate that. Um, so uh, we, we went, and uh, like I said, this was August 18, 2020. Literally two, year, two years and a month from when we started this whole talk, it came about. We wanted to do it earlier, but things just didn't work. Um, so that's where we are today, and uh, that's where it's going. Uh, I need to tell you just a little bit about the scope of this project. We said, okay, where does Rennerdale begin? Where does it end? In this book that uh, I was dealing with Rand uh, on, I happened to come across a map that my family had. And it's the larger of the two over here to my left, your right. And it's an original 18, it's not, that's not the original, it's a photocopy, but it's uh, an 1896 plat as to how this place was laid out, meaning Rennerdale. There were 99 acres, I'm not gonna get into it. The, the, first, the first 100 pages of this, 558 pages, folks. The first 100 talks about the history of Rennerdale in picture and in word. And so it describes that. And so we said, we can't conceivably just talk about all of Rennerdale because Rennerdale that has no end. You know, people on McMichael Road and people out in, in Highlands 1 and Highlands 2 and this, that, and the next. So what we did was, is we simply said, the families, the homes, the properties in this plaque would be the scope of our project. Folks, we could have, we could, we could still be writing about Rennerdale beyond that, but that was our scope. Uh, that's how we felt that we could limit ourselves. And I know that there were some people that wanted to contribute, but we said, you know, we have to limit this thing, or it would have been a ten-volume book. Uh, trust me, it would have been that. Um, so uh, it, it's been wonderful. Um, now, all of you have gotten this bookmark. I know that there's going to be some people that want to order more books. Uh, at the bottom of this bookmark is how you do it, and all you do is go to Lulu uh, Bookstore and uh, type in there Remembering Rennerdale, and that will get you there. Um, uh, oh, what have I learned during the past two years? Patience. Now, if you talk to my wife, I don't know where she is, but the word patience is not one that she relates to me. Um, but it, it took two years, and we I think we were all very patient because there were stumbling blocks. Um, we originally wrote this book. This book was put together according to lot numbers. 
lot number one, lot number two, lot number three, and after we had it printed, we realized that you people would revolt on us and say, no, this ain't the way it's gonna happen. So we went back and redid everything so it was by street, so it was more relative uh, that you could relate to. Uh, so patience was one of the things that I think I learned, but what? Technology works. Trust me, folks, this book was created in the state of Washington, meaning it was put together. What you see right here is put together in the state of Washington. We contributed, Kathleen's pictures are there, the, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the watercolors are there, the pictures of the houses are there, all the stories that were written by you and by us, that was all sent to the state of Washington to Rand, and he put it all together. So I know that technology works. Okay, and, uh, oh, focal points. It's amazing how you all wrote things, but it all gleaned down to just a couple things. Fossils Cliff is a key element to your thinking as to what Rennerdale is. You know, the, what, are, what, are the, what are the major, you know, visiting points if you come to Rennerdale? Fossils Cliff is one of them. The pond, of course, it's more or less in the center of this whole community. Um, uh, let's see, oh, the uh, quarries uh, was another uh, situation. We've had some stories that we had to pull from the book because they kind of got x-rated. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't mention any names. But, uh, and that, and the, the last one that, uh, you know, it, it, it was amazing how as you, these stories came in, the word Schleeper's Hill was always brought into it. Uh, always on a snowy day, everybody must have been going down Schleeper's Hill. I know that it was for me, and I know it was for a lot of you. Uh, for those of you that don't know it, I don't think there's too many. Uh, we're on Columbia. Columbia, and when you go past Suburban, uh, Columbia goes like this, straight down. And uh, sled riding was a, a wonderful event there. Um, personally, I have a, made a reconnection to my hometown, and uh, it's, it's been, I've been gone for 52 years, but you can't imagine how this reconnected me. It was an opportunity to relive uh, these first and primitive, uh, formative years of growing up here in Rennerdale. It, it was a wonderful experience because it did truly bring me back to my roots. Uh, like I said, it came in a miniature size compared to what I remember it as, but it's still uh, Rennerdale. And I appreciate, we appreciate, all that you did to contribute to make this thing what it is. So thank you so very much. Okay, Mark? Sure. Want to finish your time? Well, we didn't get started on time either. So um, one of the things I would like to do before, I'm gonna do my remarks, and then we're gonna do some housekeeping about the book distribution and the uh, raffle and um, that kind of thing. Um, there's some people that I know we're, we're looking for some other people. So um, I know that Pam and Karen Hoffman, if you would raise your hand, okay? Because there's some people that live over here in the Hoffman house who would like to meet you, right? Okay, so remind me, is there anybody else? Mr. Kelly, I know that you were there and you were looking to meet the Grimeses and, and, and Doreen. You got that squared away. Anybody else that's looking for somebody in the audience that I forgot about? Barbara Ann is looking for Shirley Walton's daughter. Did you raise your hand? Right there in the same row. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the things that were really funny was when you would get this request for a book and, um, and the purchaser would say, my mother grew up at 14, 14 Columbia. Well, I'm on my back porch looking at the back of 14 Columbia. And then I have to start calling people like Janice Ammond and Barbara Tomey and say, was that always the Walton House? Oh, yes, yes. And I said, well, um, so um, we got a request and I need to understand. And of course, it turns out that your very best friend is the mother 
and Shirley Walton, and, and, and it all comes full circle, does it not? You were so excited about that. So um, if there's anybody here that's looking for anybody, raise your hand now. If not, I'm going to give my remarks, and then we're going to go to the um, explanation of uh, the uh, um, raffle. And um, How about one or two questions? One or two questions. Does anybody have a question? Yes, that's, that's great. That's perfect. Um, if you have a question about Rennerdale, if you have a question about the book, um, we'd be more than glad to entertain them. Did you ever find out whether Rennerdale School had a bell outside? That mystery is ongoing, <laughs> ongoing. And Miss Miss Fantoni, what can you say about that? Are you going to say it? She, she going to comment about the bell or not? Can you, Pam, can you hear me? You want to come up, Pam? I can talk about it or not. My uh, nephew was uh, born and yeah. raised in Leonardo. We live in Walker Avenue. And, you know, the cathedral swears that there was you know, a bell there, and he has to remember ringing it. But now he lives in California, and I have been asking around, and so I'm, I'm really not sure. And But somebody was saying that there might have been a bell in the janitor's house at one time, and possibly that was what he was referring to, and then it was kind of like pushed to the side, you know, like the end of the uh, property of the school, and it was kind of found by him and some of the children just playing in the area. So whenever I called him to contact, uh, you know, what, what he remembers about Leonardville, that was one thing that, that he had said. So it still kind of remains a mystery. It is a mystery, and, and we've presented it that way because it kind of makes sense that there would have been a bell. The bell on the top of this steeple on this church was a gift from the railroaders. So it makes sense that they would have maybe gifted the school when it opened. I don't know. Um, in order to answer your question, Janice, we're gonna we're gonna keep on it like the Hardy Girls, right? <laughs> and and we never did find it. Um, Rand thought that the bell that is now um, up at Chartres Valley might have been a bell from a school in this area, but we know that it wasn't Winterdale School. So, um, and we don't remember a bell. We don't remember a bell at all, so, you know. And we remember everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the word raffle. Like, what, what is that? What is that for? Um, so, yeah, there, there, was, there was things that came up, Janice. Um, for instance, your house looks a lot like a house that was featured in a movie. Could your house have been the house that they built for Mr. Renner? We don't know. I don't know, but I when I was a teenager, I told that there was a young, good-looking guy knocked on our door, and my sister Nancy and I were both young, and nobody else was home, and he said that his grandfather, Mr. Fleck, built the house, and he wanted to come in to see it, but we said no. <laughs> <laughs> It, it makes sense that, I mean, we've read that there was a house in Rennerville that Mr. Renner lived in, but we've never, we've never identified that. Um, there was one picture that I got from the Sidicum family, and um, I, I still can't tell you where that house is. You know, I mean, and we've tried to figure that out. Um, Elmer, I believe, took the picture. It looks like a Victorian. One of the funniest things was the house that was here was part of this property. Originally, it was the Taylor House, and um, the church had acquired it as a manse over the years. And, and, and Judy, it wasn't until Betsy Taylor sent pictures of that house because she grew up in it. And I said to her, where is this house? And she said, what do you mean? And it had the porch on it. So it looked like it, it was a Victorian, right? Like number one, McMichael, a Victorian. 
Um, there were other Victorians here, but but it rotted. Betsy told me the porch rotted. We took it off. So we never saw that house really as a Victorian. But she, she sent the picture in. So, I mean, there was a lot of things that, you know, because of when we were, um, when we were born and raised that had already gone by the boards, which is why I think it's so important that we, that we finally do have a history of Brennerdale. Um, it's just been a, an incredible ride. Um, is there any other questions? Um, yes, ma'am. Did you hear from somebody in any house? We wish that we had. Um, that would have been really nice, but again, we did not, um, our advertising was kind of on an organic level. Um, we didn't, I, my plan was to go door to door, like the Fuller Brush Man. <laughs> but COVID hit. And COVID did a number in terms of, I mean, I don't have a problem being pushy, and, and I would have pushed, but I knew that wouldn't go over. And, and, and some people don't want to be, you know, the focus of it. So, so that's Winterdale. I mean, that's just the way it is. And so one of the things that we had talked about was that after the book comes out, um, what happens if we get rushed? <laughs> would we would we go on? Yes. Who knows, right? As long as, well, your goal was just to get here today, right? <laughs> she said, if you don't get this book done before I die, <laughs> is that what you said? Never. <laughs> Pinocchio, your nose is growing. I think that personally, that in a in a two year time frame, it was unbelievable. But it's what we did on our COVID vacation, right? Any other questions? Any other comments? I know we have lots of people here with questions and can talk to each other afterwards. Um, I'm going to read my remarks. I'm going to try to do that. Um, my significant other said I'll never do it, so I'm going to prove them wrong. <laughs> Sometimes reading from a script is hard. And sometimes speaking from the heart is hard. But here and now, I will do my best to do both. At over 500 pages and nearly five pounds, Remembering Renardale has fed a spirit in my soul, a spirit that sprouted as a kid growing up Renardale. You know, it's one thing to believe that you had the most wonderful growing up years. But the joy I felt reading the stories in these pages, stories that reflected that same spirit, has completed a journey I consider an honor. The opportunity to record a piece of history has been a gift I can never repay. Every story, every picture, and every reflection brought buried memories into a forgotten focus. An innate knowledge that reinforced what I had stored away. Many times, the contributions, your contributions, felt like Christmas. You remember that emotion you felt as a kid, opening a gift you absolutely love? Over the years, I had grown accustomed to hearing folks sing the praises of Renardale. I wasn't surprised. I had spent over two decades praying my way back home. The privilege of recording pieces of the past, honoring the lives of those who paved the way from their past to our today, sharing their dream of a valued future, we sincerely present this book with the hope that you enjoy it as much as we have enjoyed our journey. Thank you. Very, very eloquent and uh, much appreciated. It, it speaks the heart of 
the three of us here. We appreciate it. Um, our time is closing. Uh, I know that uh, there's still opportunity for you to go to the lower level to take a look again at, at Kathleen's uh, materials that are down there, her watercolors. I know she would like to talk to you, especially if you were a member of that household in some way, shape, or form. Um, but uh, we're gonna also have a raffle. Now, you know, maybe some of you thought that we were gonna give away a car or some such thing, and that's why you stayed around till 2.30. It's, it's not, it's not. Yeah, our house in Rinderdale. <laughs> Ain't gonna happen, folks, not on our watch. Um, what we have is uh, these uh, maps over here. Uh, there's two of them, the one large one I uh, described, and then a smaller one that I think that they used for a marketing ploy. It actually has a uh, uh, streetcar. It was designed to have streetcars going through the middle of Rennerdale. And so there's that one. I have three of each, and what I'd like to do is to give away all six of them. Now, I'm gonna call numbers out, and uh, <coughs> The first three people get their choice. After that, it's whatever is left behind. Do we have a young person here under the age of 70? <laughs> I don't even fit into that. There were some youngsters here, but I think they've slipped out. Is there a, oh, oh there, okay, those two are the, the youngest ones back here. Caleb, why don't you come on up here and you can yank this up. Oh, he's gonna pull out all the swoggers. <laughs> so if you would pull out a number and hand it to me, I would appreciate it. Yeah, you won't look. There you go, let me see it. Okay, does anybody's ticket begin with 866? Yes. <laughs> they all do, folks. I'll just tell you that right now. That's how they make these tickets up. The first three numbers are always unique to that roll. Okay, now we're getting down to the last three numbers. So the first three numbers are 866-069. Are you in the house? 069. Do we have a hand? We're going to keep pulling until we find a hand. Nobody has one? Okay. Next one. And the number on this one is, he's looking at it and I'm looking at it too. Uh, zero one four. There we go. Um, just tell me which one you want, left or right. Okay, so that's one of the big ones. So one of the big ones is gone. Okay, so uh, dig in there again. I hope I can remember keeping tally here. Okay, the next one we're going to give away is zero zero nine. Is that one here? No? Okay. Uh, those people that are going to be handing books out, uh, you, be Look, you got it? You got one? No, you didn't get it? Sure, don't worry. Oh, did you put it back in? You won already? She already won? Get one. Okay, well, if we call it again, we'll call it a dud. Okay, uh, 092. Do we have a 092? 092? 092? Yes? Which one do you want, Danny? <laughs> Small or large? Stand up. The one on the right, and I think the one on the right is a large one, so two large ones are gone. Okay, one more, or at least one more for a start. And the last three digits on that are 029. 029, yes, large or small? Small one, okay, so one small gone, two large gone. Another one. And the number here is 012, 012. 012, small or large? Large, okay, all the larges are gone. Now I'm gonna ask you since you were last, you want, okay, no, we'll not go there. <laughs> we'll, not, we'll not go there yet. Uh, I need one more at least. Uh, we're now working the small ones. We have two small ones left, I believe. Zero five eight. Zero five eight. Okay, you get a small. Oh, it is a swoker finally. <laughs> you weren't going to get a ride home tonight. <laughs> and the last one, uh, zero three seven. Zero three seven. Zero three seven. 
037 037 Somebody else. Are you 037? Okay, you get a small one. Okay, I will tell you this, and you all can fight over it the way you want. Uh, there, two of them are on black uh, foam boards. Um, that's part of it. There's two on the there's there's four on the table, and there's these two here. I'll let you figure out who's going to get the foam board. Okay, what you're going to do now is uh, we're going to leave uh, in a peaceful manner. <laughs> And we're going to go over to the tables, and the tables have your letter on it. Thank you, folks, ever so much for being here.